Welcome to Thrive with Nancy. It's a podcast for executive women where we address and untangle any and all career concerns you might face along the way to your promotions, to your salary increases, to achieving all that you've dreamed of achieving in your career. Sounds like too much promises? Well, I feel confident because I've been working with thousands of women and this works if you choose to follow the advice. Hey, I have a request for you. After listening, and I anticipate finding value for yourself, I ask you do me a big fat favor. Please spread the word, subscribe and share the podcast with your friends. I would love to see more people getting this advice. Thanks so much. Hey, let's get started. Enough about me. Let's move into you. Today's topic emerged from a recent woman's mastermind program that I led. When I asked each woman, why did you register for this program? What are your expectations? What do you want to get at the end of the program? There was a common theme. In one way or another, they were all looking to refresh, renew, and reinvent their leadership influence. So that's exactly what this podcast is about today. And this request is coming from women who have achieved impressive positions in their organization, just like you have. Yet the last two years have left them feeling a need to up the ante regarding their style and how they respond to things and the tools that they're using because today's marketplace simply requires more of their leaders than it ever has before. Yes, in future podcasts, we'll discuss and focus on specific skills to aid your leadership arsenal. But in this podcast, I'm addressing the most significant improvement to bring the best leader out in you. Guess what that is? You. It all emerges from inside you and plays out successfully in the outside world. So it's about how you feel about yourself and how you express your leadership. Ready to feel better about yourself? Yes, this really does improve your leadership abilities, even though you're probably shaking your head and go, all contraire, Nancy. I need hard skills. This is all about me and I need more outside skill sets. So my first one is going to have you shaking your head. But go with it. Stop watering your weeds. Instead, water the flowers. Water the uniqueness, your gifts, your skills, the achievements you've made, and so much more. I have to tell you that human beings, and it appears to me more often than not with women, there is a built-in proclivity for us to dwell on the negative rather than all of our successes. So puzzle me this. If you're focusing only on the things that you've done wrong, only where you weren't as fine as you wanted to be, does that have you improving yourself or does that have you drilling deeper and deeper into everything that's wrong with you? I know the answer because I coach tons of women who have this issue. Focusing on the negative isn't going to get you anywhere. You need to focus on your strengths. That brings about more productivity and success in everyone's career. Not to mention, think about it this way. If you're following a leader that goes, oh, I screwed up here. Oh, I need to do better here. Oh, I'm not sure that I could do that because I failed the last time. How willing are you to follow that leader? I hate to say this, and I've said it to you before. How the world perceives you often determines your success as a leader. And on the other side of this equation is you. If you're only focused on your negative, it is very unlikely that you're going to feel good enough about yourself to be who you need to be for your staff and your company. Think about it. This is a serious concern of mine. Yes, I want you to improve. 
from the stretch of choice, not because I'm such a failure. Okay, I'm getting off of that. Oh, maybe I'm not. One more little quick thought. You always get what you're measuring for. And if you're asking yourself time after time how bad you are as a leader, you're going to become that kind of bad leader in the external world. Now, I'm done. Okay, what's the next one? I want you to hear this one. It's the union of your resolve and your willingness to risk. You don't feel very good about yourself when you know you're holding back, when you're keeping yourself small, when you're not expanding who you could be. And again, rarely will employees follow you when you're playing small. You know, there was research years ago, and it may still be true, but this was years ago, that showed that nobody, even women, wanted to work for a female leader. Now, I know that's changed because there's a lot of female leaders out there. However, I want you to think about this. Why didn't they want to be on board with leaders who were female? It was because they weren't connecting with the high-level relationships that you need to be an influencer. They weren't risking anything, all of which you need to do to be a leadership influencer. They were holding themselves small and thinking that the work they did, the checking the boxes off of their to-do list, was enough to be moved up the corporate ladder. And that is not the equation, and you know it. How many times have you scored high on your performance evaluation and someone who scored just as high as you received the promotion that you longed for but didn't get? It was because of this internal view of yourself that kept you small. And companies aren't promoting smallness. They're promoting innovators, big picture thinkers, those that can inspire large numbers of people to follow them. So it's all about your resolve in who you want to be and the risks you're willing to take to get outside of your comfort zone. You know, I have a vision of this when I think of resolve and risk, and it's Indiana Jones. I know you're probably laughing, but think about it. Indiana Jones was committed to saving his father's life at all costs. He was willing to risk everything, and he was never, ever going to let anything stop him from the goal of saving his dad's life, period. That moment at the edge of the cliff where he stepped off into seemingly nothingness only to find his way is the moment leaders face throughout their career. You see, we need to be resolved inside ourselves to be the leader that we want to be. It's not a gift given to us. It's something that we reveal inside ourselves. So think of the people searching, as was many of Indiana Jones's competitors, who probably even stood in that moment of resolve and risk on the journey, but turned around and never stepped out, never trusted. They certainly didn't discover the secret, did they? What Indiana Jones did was symbolic of stepping out from the space of comfort into the unknown. And that's what leaders do all the time. Not every moment of every day. However, more often than not. Let me challenge you. How resolved are you to being the best leader you can be? Do you regularly step out of your comfort zone into the unknown? You know that's a stretch assignment for you. Or finally, you get up the courage, because it does take courage, to generate connections with influential senior level executives who you may never have worked with before. Resolve to risk getting out of your comfort zone even a little every week. 
It's going to make a difference to your career. I guarantee it. You have no idea what these big and little successes will do to you along the way of your career journey. Okay, my next one is celebrate partial victories. I have to tell you, I see this more often in executive women than I do the male executives that I coach. You need to celebrate. Celebrate your journey along the way. Celebrate partial victories. I so often see women holding on with tight fists to the project or the idea or the direction they want to go. And they're only willing to consider it a success when they reach the end, not along the way. I'm always reminded of that Kennedy space flight that went to the moon and landed. Something that at that time in our history was beyond anyone's imagination or possibility. And I have to tell you that in my young mind, I really envisioned that they just went, okay, GPS, moon, and went straight to the moon. No, no, no. They moved this direction and changed direction here and moved this way based upon the environment they were facing, based upon the challenges that they were facing, and then they landed on the moon. Do you hear me? It's never a direct shot to your moon, to your impossible destination. There has to be adjustment, adjustment, adjustment along the way. And what I want you to do is celebrate the adjustments because they're taking you closer, ever, ever closer to your dream. We women aren't celebrating the wins that we have enough to put that feeling of success inside of us. You know, that bubble of, I can do it. I can handle everything. So start thinking wins. I would love it if you celebrated a win every week. Not just a made-up win, but a win that you can feel good about. So start measuring for the wins. Remember what I said earlier, What you measure for is what you get. What if you started measuring for your wins and celebrating the little ones? And oh my gosh, when you hit the big one, blow out, blow out, blow out celebration is what I'm thinking for you. So now that you have the resolve to risk, which is what I hope you have, and you're really thinking about what I'm hoping you're thinking about, which is refresh, renew, and reinvent, because those are all in your hands. My advice to dive in right now, a new level of zest will enter your day that has you in the skin of a leader, that has you in the mindset of a leader, that has you breathing the air of a leader that has you coming up with ideas as a leader. Are you ready to experience more days filled with joy, fulfillment, and purpose? Without this attitude, it's difficult to discover your career can be and is limitless. You need these thoughts to bring about the desires of your heart. And you're the only one who can truly bring this into being. By the way, I can help you if you're looking for a partner to co-create along the journey. I would love to be that back system for you that has you thinking ever so slightly different and seeing something that you never saw before. I'd love for you to check out the Your Strategic Edge program in my Thrive with Nancy website. You can partner with me as I have for so many executive women and I will help you, I promise, to unlock secrets for expanding your career. Together, we will explore the diverse ways to bring possibility into being for you to realize your professional aspirations. Check it out at 
www.thrivewithnancy.com forward slash executive forward slash. I'd be delighted to support you. Remember, no one ever makes it to the top alone. So reaching out doesn't make you less, it makes you more. Thanks so much. And again, pass out this podcast to all your friends. I'm thrilled you've listened to the Thrive with Nancy podcast. My intention is to offer quick tips designed for you to apply right away, ones that will boost your career immediately. I bet you're already considering ways to implement these new ideas. Perfect. Now, if you do me a favor, pass the podcast link on to those who will benefit, your friends and co-workers. Thanks so much.